everyone, Helen here. It's lovely to have you here with me today. Uh, a big welcome if you're a new subscriber and of course if you've been here for a while it's really lovely to have you back. And this is just my place um, in a little corner of the northeast of England <laughs> near Durham uh, where I chat to you about all my creative things that I do which is quite a variety of things. Um, today I am going to just chat a little bit about knitting crochet projects, not for very long, um, and one or two other things, And that, but mostly I'm going to chat to you about my 100 day project that I'm going to take part in, or I've just started taking part in when this first goes out, uh, it will just have started. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to take you on a little walk that I went on very recently um, in not brilliant weather, but we had a lovely time all the same. So, yeah, so that's today. Uh, so first of all, I'm not going to talk about all the projects I'm doing today. Um, every, every couple of weeks or so, I, I do a bit more of a roundup, but I just was going to show you a finished pair of socks. That's the one thing I've finished since last week and that's made using yarn um, that was very kindly gifted to me after I'd taken part in the Enchanted Forest make-along last year and um, yeah so I'm really really pleased with those socks it's uh, yarn that I've never used before and the, the colours are gorgeous and they will I, well, they are actually heading to be a gift for somebody, those. And as you can see, I haven't tried to match the patterns. Um, none of the people I make socks for are bothered about whether the patterns matched, uh, ma the patterns match. Um, so, yeah, so they're, they're absolutely fine as they are. And as I always do, when I've finished one pair of socks, I pretty much straight away cast on another one. And this time, um, I'm, I'm being a bit daring, <laughs> doing things differently to my usual plain sock that I do. And uh, first of all, I decided I would make some socks using slightly thicker yarn than four ply. So I'm going to use some of my quite big stash of leftover Stylecraft Special DK. And um, so, yeah, so that's what I'm, the yarn that I'm using for these socks. And I'm using a pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears, which I bought on Ravelry. And the two things that I'm doing this time, which I don't normally do, are a contrast cuff, heel and toe. Um, and there's a nice textured pattern in it as well. So I'm very pleased with how they're looking. I've finished one already, so it's definitely quicker using DK yarn. Quicker, quicker to make a pair of socks with thicker yarn. And I think it'll just be nice, cosy house socks. Um, anyway, so they're, they're uh, on the way and probably I'll have finished them by next week. Uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, one new thing. And then the other thing, that new thing that I've started this week uh, is totally uh, spontaneous being attracted by what I've seen on Instagram. <laughs> Honestly, I just cannot resist. And especially if there's a mouse involved. So I am busy making a kind of a set that is called a mouse in a suitcase. Bought the pattern on Etsy from Laura Loves Crochet and it's a very nicely written pattern of this uh, mouse and accessories and um, so the mouse is finished and a little t-shirt for her to wear. So she always also will have a dress and a dressing gown and a blanket and pillow and a suitcase. Oh, and a bit of cheese. And for the suitcase, you need some of that plastic grid stuff. I can't remember what you call it um, to make it a nice uh, firm. So it's got nice firm sides. Um, so that'll be a new thing for me to try. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, showing you that. I have no idea why I'm making it. I just was totally sidetracked when I saw the picture of it and thought, oh, I love that. So yes, that's my mouse. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to tell you about last week uh, was that I 
was absolutely really excited when I found out that I'd won uh, in a prize draw from Angela of the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel uh, last September, I think it was, uh, round about last September anyway, she had a gnome knit along, so I joined in with that, of course, uh, and my name came out of the hat for one of the prizes, so I won this lovely set of yarn, uh, it's double knitting yarn, um, Welsh yarn, Cartref, which I've never used before, and I'm looking forward to using it, and you know, I, I've won it in a gnome knit along, so I've got to make a gnome with it, a gnome or two. So I look forward to starting that. But that was really, really exciting. I, I don't normally go around winning things, so that was that was really, really nice when when I got the message to say that I'd got that. So yeah, so that's that. And um, and then another thing that just I'm going to chat briefly about. Uh, is that just in, in the comments last week a couple of people were interested to know how I did videoing from overhead and it's, so I just thought I'd briefly show you in case you were interested to see how I do that. Um, I most of the time uh, use my phone camera for videoing my podcasts. Most of the things are very occasionally I have used my other like more normal camera but yeah, I mostly use a phone. And so I bought a kind of a bendy uh, phone holder that would clamp onto a table or chair or whatever. And, and you just attach your phone and direct it over what you're doing. Um, it, it's not a perfect solution. I think there are uh, probably better solutions than this. That was just happened to be the first thing that I decided to try. Um, but I mean, it works pretty well. I just have to be careful not to knock it because it, with it being a long bendy thing, then it, it then wobbles. <laughs> so that's not so good. And and maybe the other thing that you have to be careful with is uh, that you uh, check that the that your phone is. Um, recording, videoing in landscape mode because it when, when you tip your phone over to do an overhead shot it for some reason it decides it would like to be portrait rather than landscape but you just have to check and then just fiddle about with it a bit so yeah so I hope that was uh, that's interesting anyway to see how I do that. So I'm going to chat a bit now about the 100 day project and if you've been following me for quite a while, you will have seen that um, I took part in this project last year. Um, if you haven't seen that uh, podcast, then I will leave a link to it on the end screen of this podcast so that you can go and have a look to see um, to see what I did or, or learn a bit more about it than I'm going to tell you today. Um, but I'm going to show you some of the things that I did last year um, in my in today. I'm going to show you some photos. So, yeah, so it, as I say, it's not much more than a year since I first came across the 100 Day Project. And it's basically a worldwide creative event that takes place each year where people commit themselves to doing something creative each day for 100 consecutive days and to record each day's effort in some way and perhaps posting on Instagram because that's the main platform where you can show what you've been doing. Um, I joined in last year with the aim of improving my drawing skills. I've really been questioning the whole idea of what an artist is and who can call themselves an artist and whether I could consider myself as one. Um, because I'd always felt that I was absolutely no good at drawing and other forms of art as in painting and that kind of thing. However, in the spirit of uh, being brave and setting an example to others, <laughs> I decided just to go for it and not to worry about what anyone thought of the drawings that I was going to post each day on um, Instagram. And I tried really hard not to be put off by seeing the efforts of other 100 Day Project participants um, who to, seemed to me all to be amazing artists. Um, Interestingly, one of the recent emails that I received in the run-up to this year's event was reflecting on the fact that the word good 
is really a bit of a nothing word and that being willing to try is much more important than being good at something um you know whatever being good means um for my project uh last year i chose to do a passport photo size drawing of an item from my craft room each day a different item each day and then put it into a little frame and take a photo of it alongside the item that i'd drawn um i thoroughly enjoyed doing the project I managed to complete the 100 days and in the process was pleasantly surprised by all the supportive comments that I got on Instagram, as, as well as getting a feeling of satisfaction uh, that maybe I wasn't quite as bad at drawing as I thought, uh, although I do still have plenty of room for improvement. And I just, I love it that I got to the end and I wanted to keep every single drawing and I now look at the framed drawings on my craft room wall with well, quite a lot of pride and pleasure. So after I'd completed the project last year, I decided I'd definitely like to do it again. However, I wanted something that wouldn't take up quite so much of my time as last year, because last year I usually spent up to an hour a day doing the drawing, colouring, photography and posting to Instagram. And that's quite a chunk out of my day when I've got a lot of other things that need to be done as well. Um, so my first thought for this year was to create decorative backing papers for a lovely present that I got for Christmas, a beautiful old printer's tray, which I plan to hang on the wall and use as shelving for tiny things, because I already have quite a collection of tiny things, as you might already know. Uh, there are actually 102 little compartments in this tray, uh, so just about right for the 100 days, I thought. However, it wasn't really inspiring me in the way that I'd hoped, because I think I'd actually prefer to use some decorative papers that I've already got. So the next thing I thought, uh, which came to me when I was taking down Christmas things from the branches that I've got hanging in the conservatory, uh, and I was putting the knitted birds back, that I could make leaves to adorn the branches. So I thought about that for a bit and then decided that a hundred leaves on these branches might be a bit too many because quite a lot of the branches are very, very thin and yes, might easily snap if I start attaching things to them. However, I stuck with the idea of leaves and I mean, it's not an original idea because I saw at least one person doing the, that kind of thing last year. I think it was somebody with a junk journal, art journal, was doing some kind of papery leaf, uh, different leaf each day. But anyway, I, I like this idea of leaves. So I've decided to create a piece of artwork that would say something about me as a creative person who dabbles in all sorts of different activities. So I did think about buying a very large canvas and then maybe painting the outline of a tree on it and then adding the leaves onto that. But then I actually decided to settle on four 12 inch square canvas boards. And so I plan to attach 25 leaves to each one in a five by five grid. So I'm planning to create a different leaf each day using any media that I can think of. Uh, so the finished work will be like a, a pictorial representation of my creativity, all the things that I like to have a go at. So it'll include knitting and crochet, sewing, embroidery, felting, drawing, painting, collage, and so on, anything that I can think of. Um, I, I did for a moment worry that this year's project wouldn't be as interesting to other people as last year's, but then I realized that, hey, I'm doing the project that I want to do. I'm doing it for me. I'm not actually doing it to try and please anybody. Um, although I do hope that you will enjoy seeing the variety of different leaves that I create. Uh, 100 is quite a lot of different leaves. So I think it's going to be easy to start off with and probably get harder and harder as time go, goes by to come up with different leaves. But it's really so easy to fall into the trap of worrying about what people will think and feeling this need to please other people. Um, yeah, so a, a really 
nice quote that I came across, uh, which is, life is so much simpler when you stop explaining yourself to, to people and just do what works for you. Um, so the reason I'll be posting on Instagram each day is not to try and impress anyone, um, but simply because I just want to be part of the project with thousands and thousands of other people around the world. And in the process, um, I might make some new friends. I might inspire w one other person to realise that you don't have to do anything complicated to be creative and to take part, but just how to take a simple idea and approach it with a positive attitude without feeling failure or criticism. And the best way to follow my progress um, in the project um, is if you want to see it on a daily basis is to follow me on Instagram where I'm at Mousy Makes Pod. Um, but I will keep you regularly updated on my podcast as well if you don't use Instagram. So so that's that will be fine. So yeah, so I'm really excited to be doing this again and uh, hopefully it's not going to take up quite so much of my time as it did last year. So I will be definitely back with more news of that um, in the coming weeks. So to finish off with today, I'm going to just take you out on a walk that I went on at a place uh, fairly local to us, um, still in the northeast of England. And uh, it's uh, actually owned by the National Trust now, the big landscaped, um, I wouldn't know, even bigger than gardens, it's kind of landscaped countryside, I suppose. Um, that was that was created in the 18th century and it's a really lovely place to go for a walk even when it's raining which it was some other time while I was out anyway let's let's go off and have a little walk enjoyed that and um, yeah I will be back back again quite soon uh, with more walks and actually I haven't been in the kitchen for a while have I, I haven't baked anything with you for, a, for quite a while so I think I'll probably have to do that next week um, and I'm going to chat a bit more about bullet journaling as well I've been thinking a bit more about it and so I've got some more thoughts about it to share with you uh, so, but I think for today that's it and I just wish you um, a peaceful time until I see you again, keeping busy, taking care of yourself and I'll see you again very soon. Okay then, bye. <laughs>